the intuitive who teaches you how to heal yourself and manifest a well and delicious life through the practice of self-love. Today's video, I want to talk about something that um, is an awareness that I have received and that has been transforming my life and something that I received quite recently within like the last two years. And that is really, I am in a chapter of my life where I am a recovering overgiver and under receiver. I have spent the majority of my life in overgiving and under receiving. And I've talked in previous va uh, videos about where um, the behavior patterns, I was recognizing the behavior patterns that led to the manifestation of disease in my body um, because they created imbalance in me and they created a drain from me being disconnected from my soul's energy holding it in my body. Overgiving and under receiving is the behavior pattern that has caused me um, kind of the most pain. It has led to me feeling deeply exhausted and deeply unfulfilled. And what it looked like, it manifested many different ways across the course of my life. And I, I did a lot of introspection with this and awareness around this, because this is something you have to do if you're really going to heal your life. You have to become different. Instead of having the, the behavior patterns and the thought patterns that manifested illness, you have to embody the behavior patterns and the thought patterns that manifest wellness, that are aligned with love, that, that bring love, the energy of your soul, into the body. And... What I was looking at as I was looking at how I used to overgive. So pretty much all of my life, I've always been more in service to others than I was to myself. I would show up for them. I would um, offer my time, my resources, my body, um, and not receive back. Definitely not in any equal measure. And oftentimes, most times, I wouldn't receive back at all. And this happened in every area of my life. Um, as a matter of fact, my friendships, um, some of my closest friends that I had for years were um, relationships where I was constantly showing up for them and they were rarely showing up for me. And I remember this one experience where I was going through, right? Here I am on dialysis, diseased, trying to heal. And I was going to uh, meet one of my friends at a restaurant and I was going through it this day. I was tired and I had some emotional things that I was going through and I really needed someone to listen to me and to, um, to support me and hold me, right? I really needed to be supported. I needed to receive. But when I stepped into the restaurant, my friend was crying and immediately everything had to shift into helping them. So again, I am in need of help, but I am helping others. And this is the pattern that I lived for most of my life. Instead of receiving, I showed up more to give. And all of my friendship was like that. I, I, was, I was constantly showing up where I was giving of my wisdom, my time, my advice, um, my money, my help, my support. And I wasn't receiving back. The type of relationships, the intimate relationships I was getting into had the same pattern. Like I would date people and I was always calling them. They weren't calling me or I was always making the plans and making the effort to try to connect. And they weren't really doing that with me. And so there was this pattern of Jerome being selfless, like being of service to others and not being in service to himself, not making sure he received what he needed, not making sure he received what he wanted. And what that did, and it made me exhausted. It made me exhausted because when we are always giving of our energy out and there is no deposits of our energy back in, it exhausts you. And you cannot continue down the path of exhaustion and stay healthy. This pattern helped also help uh, continue with my parents. When I um, was diagnosed, I moved back home, um, moved back into the city where my parents were, and I moved here to receive support from them. And I would have dialysis. And one thing about dialysis, after dialysis, it drained me like nothing I had ever experienced before. If you can think about like the old movies where vampires 
would um, bite people on the neck and they would suck all their blood out and they would look lifeless and drained, but they were still alive. That's exactly how I felt to the T. Like, I know what that feels like. And I would have, I would be in this space. And what I really needed to do after dialysis was I need to sleep for about four hours. Literally, I just need to, I need to eat and I need to sleep. I don't need to do anything. I don't need to walk. I don't need to carry anything. I don't need to have a conversation. I need to get something in my body to eat and I need to go to sleep. Well, a lot of times my parents would call me and they would ask me to do things, ask me to run an errand for them while they were at work or check on something at their house or write something up for them because they weren't good at technology. And instead of saying, no, I'll do this tomorrow when I feel better, I would show up and do it. And I would be so sick afterwards. And there was this pattern of always putting other people before. And one of the things that I looked at as why this pattern was happening of overgiving for me was one, I realized a few years ago, I came into the awareness that I am an empath. I am actually very high on the empath scale. I'm not the highest on the scale, but I'm like right up there. And one of the attributes of empaths is empaths are innately, like they are wired to be more selfless. And in order to experience well-being, they have to learn how to be more self-full, how to do things that allow them to be full of the energy of themselves instead of always serving their energy to other people. And other thing about empaths is because I feel the energy of other people, I really care about their happiness. And when they're not happy, or especially if they're not happy with me, I can feel it and it makes me feel bad. And so before I understood I was an empath and I didn't know like the, the self-love practices to do to really stay in my own energy, um, the way that, that I would try to handle that so that I didn't feel bad is make them happy. Like always make them happy. That's what a good person does. A good person is of service and they make people happy. But the person who was being happy was always them and never me. Right. And not just not happy. Like, so again, I'm showing up to help people fulfill their dreams. And it was again in my work. Here I am helping people heal around the world over and over and over and over again and not stepping back and saying, I need time off to heal myself. Right. So again, overgiving, under receiving. And it was an addiction. It's an addictive behavioral pattern. That's why I say I'm in recovery for it because what you would get from it was this feeling of being liked and approved of because everybody loves a person that shows up and puts their needs to the side to meet their own. We love that person. What we are challenged of in many cultures is the person who says, no, I have unmet needs that need to get met first. And once my needs are met, I will show up to help you get yours met. This is the chapter I'm in now. The chapter I am in now is about receiving. Receiving. Just like if you were starving for something, like if you were literally starving, not just hungry, but you are starving, you are are medically starving. In order to get yourself back into balance and to get yourself back into wellness, you need to eat a lot. You need to eat more than the average person. And you need to eat maybe where an average person may see you and think you're being gluttonous, You're actually healing. You actually need that amount. This is where I am now. I am pulling back from showing up so much for other people. I am pulling um, back from all the relationships where they are imbalanced. I I ended all those relationships where I had an imbalance, where I was was giving and I wasn't receiving. Um, I've been really doing work with myself around recognizing the type of pattern When the person shows up, so I say, oh, yeah, this is going to be overgiving situation again. Let's not involve in that. I'm saying no more. I have boundaries. I'm I'm really getting my needs met and prioritizing my needs. Um, But I lived a lifetime of being an overgiver and being drained because of that, because this is the this is what happens when you are overgiver. You are going to be drained. You are going to have resentment. Because that's another thing in the inner injury field. When you're not getting your needs met, but you're always showing up for other people and you're not receiving, you resent them. There is no love. You think this is loving. You think being an overgiver is a loving action. And there's a lot of messages out in our communities that say this, like it's better to give than receive. But what actually happens is you become unfulfilled and you become un- um, your needs become unmet 
and you become exhausted because of this, because you're being an overwhelming, you're doing too much and you're not resting and nobody's supporting you and nobody's showing up for you. You become resentful because you're showing up for them, but you're not being showed up for. And then you're going to be sick because that energy of being exhausted and being resentful and being unfulfilled blocks the energy of the soul from being in your body and your body needs the energy of your soul to be healthy. So this is part of my healing journey is, is switching this, learning how to receive. And this is why I teach self-love because self-love is the practice of receiving love, of being loved instead of always being loving. Yes, you need to be both. But when you have been out of balance for so long, you need to correct the balance. And that's where I am right now. I am in the path of being loved, learning how to be loved and how to receive my own love instead of always giving it out to others. That's today's video. I hope you got something from this for your own healing journey and spiritual growth. Until next video, I love you. Now go love yourself.